You're watching Telecom TV from the Etsy Summit on 5G. And I'm joined now by Harita Jossi from the University of Warwick. Harita, thanks for joining us on Telecom TV. What defines an ultra-reliable and low-latency network? It's quite um, obvious if you think about it. Um, very, very high levels of reliability and extremely low levels of latency. Now, the networks we currently have, they do have, they are reliable networks as well as uh, they provide good latency. But I think what really defines the class of ultra-reliable, low-latency networks is the fact that at the very least you need the uh, accuracy of data transmission. So one message in a billion messages is allowed to be in error, not more than that. So that's, that's pretty high bit error rate, extremely high bit error rate, and that guarantees the reliability of the network. Um, and the other part of it, the low latency, that is defined as a number, which is one millisecond. Everybody is kind of latched onto it. So uh, one millisecond is the goal for low latency and ultra-reliable networks. What are the business cases for such networks? Well, the number of cases uh, mainly in factory automation and mission critical systems that could support number of use cases around this concept. Um, I come, I we at the Warwick University work very very closely with uh, um, the automotive industry. So I can give you an example of um, uh, the automotive industry's requirement uh, towards these ultra reliable low latency networks. Um, autonomous vehicles, pretty much lurking on the horizons. Um, so for the autonomous vehicles to work perfectly you need you need to be able to pass the data the moment it's generated in the sensor to straight away to the actuator with that very minimal latency and also it's it's absolutely important that um, that quality of data is extremely high because you're, you're talking about real-time control system here so an autonomous vehicle would absolutely need that sort of ultra reliability along with low latency so that's one of the use cases that you could thought about, um, think about for this type of network. The other one is, it sounds a bit far-fetched, but I don't see it impossible, is remote surgery. So that would again need very, very high precision data transfer with extremely low latencies. So uh, uh, autonomous vehicles lurking pretty much on the horizons is a use case that you could think about straight away, but there are many, many other use cases that you could come up with. So what are the verticals that benefit and how do we engage with them? I think we are now in a time when pretty much all the uh, major industries in the world are using the telecoms infrastructure. So, so far it was telecoms to provide you and you make use of it. Now, the industries themselves have specific requirements and it's the process is the other way around now. So all these industries are actually feeding into their requirements. And I think that's why it's very important that the uh, Standards Committee of 5G uh, actually engages with all the verticals that are involved and uh, uh, brings in the requirements that they have for their use cases into the design of the next generation of infrastructure. So uh, again, speaking on behalf of the automotive industry, I would say uh, we do have certain requirements and those requirements relate to a combination of uh, very, very high speed data transfer associated with high vehicular speeds. So we need high speed data transfer while we are moving very fast. And that's that's something that none of the telecom standards have been able to achieve reliably uh, so far. So that's one of the most important requirements from the automotive industry side, reliable low latency data transmission at vehicular speeds. How do we actually go about building these networks? There are lots and lots of approaches in order to uh, in order to uh, go about this. Um, there are three main things: clever modulation, clever error correction and detection, and utilizing diversity. So uh, so far, the uh, 4G network, the LTE advanced network, have been using OFDM, OFDMA modulation schemes. I think we just need to refine those more and more to be able to maximize the data transfer. But alongside that, we also need to use clever error correction detection techniques, block coding, convolutional codes, etc., and combine those with diversity, be it space, time, or frequency diversity. So this three-panged attack should hopefully be able to resolve what we need um, in terms of the next generation telecoms architecture. In terms of technology, what do you think is achievable by the 2020 deadline? 
I think we can achieve a lot of the things. I, I'm not sure if we can hit the one millisecond target for it, but I think we can certainly achieve extremely high reliability um, using diversity techniques. Um, and we can also reduce the latency significantly as well. But uh, to say that we will definitely achieve one millisecond's target by 2020 would be invitation to trouble. So I would, I would refrain from saying that. Rita, thank you very much indeed.